Hello, I'm Corey. Welcome to episode 23 of Flips, Flaps, and Folds. Today's project is a completion of the back side of the one we made yesterday. And because I attached it with um, a large oversized paper clip, I wanted the one on the back side of it to be one that I tucked in on the same way. It's a variation of what we did yesterday. It's a card that we open up, but instead of having an envelope piece on the back, this just has a tuck spot on the top and uh, a tuck spot on the front with a place to write tuck, uh, place to write inside the journaling tag or card to write on. And then I just decorated the back of this one. Though the other one I think has an additional piece. And I did this one backwards. It was kind of a happy accident. I had intended to put this little pocket on the back, but because it's going on the left side of the page, it kind of made sense to have the back be more like a decorative front and to tuck it in like this so that it wouldn't open up. So this is what we're going to be making. Super quick, super simple, and it uses cardstock and any digitals that you want or pattern paper. So here we go. All right, I made a couple samples and I made myself some notes. And this piece that I had made for Scrap Busters is what inspired it. And I had had a scrap of this, it looks like uh, 100 count graph paper and I had folded it over to make a pocket and then I'd use some scraps on the front and um, just a, another scrap to make a tuck spot on the back. Simple, simple project. And I thought, well, gosh, these are not, this is a scrap buster, but it doesn't have to be a scrap buster. And it was the impetus for what I'm making today. All right, this is what we'll be making. And this one is this, um, a decorated sample because I've had some of you ask if I would uh, occasionally share decorated samples. Excuse me. Uh, the Seth Apter Vintage Beeswax, Beeswax is an embossing powder that is just absolutely wonderful. And I don't know if you can see it there, but it's kind of got, it's just different than using diamond glaze or uh, magicals or any of those other um, crystal lacquer type pieces. It's just got a more of a vintagey feel. And I use that on the centers of these flowers. I don't believe you can get it in the US or if you can, it's not as easy, but our friends in the UK can get it fairly easily. And I used uh, braille paper for this one simply because it, to show you it works with any paper. And then on this one, the other one I decorated the back, this one I decorated the front. And then you've got your journaling space inside and you have got a journaling tag. And then this is simply just a piece of folded over coffee dyed paper to tuck in the back pocket and sew these back pockets on there. So you've got three different places in this, whoops, maybe, to journal. And you don't have to have your journaling out in front and center unless you want to. So there's another sample. This butterfly is uh, another one from Carrie from Witchcraft Do You Do? And here is a sample of uh, Carrie stamps, which are absolutely phenomenal. So if you haven't shopped over there, you really should because she's got stencil stamps, uh, these fussy cut butterflies, because I might say bad words when I cut fussy cut butterflies. So that's just an FYI. All right, I have my little cheat sheet. This is my original prototype of how to make it. Look at that, high tech, how technical and high tech is that? But the reason I did this is to show you how you can do it with an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. Now I know a lot of people, I'm sorry, I'm gonna sit down now if my voice changes. A lot of people don't care to measure, measure, measure. And I, I'll do it if I have to, but I don't really want to. And I realized yesterday after I was done with the video that I was going to show you my, my tip for not having your scoreboard jump lines and then I forgot to share it. So this is just an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock that I have cut down to, I think it's five and a half or six inches here. It doesn't really matter. Honest to goodness, as long as it fits in your book height wise, you're good. And this is 11 inches. So I didn't have to cut it down. Now I know in the UK, you guys have a little bit different sizing but it's, it's essentially 11 inches and you're gonna do it basically the same way. So the first thing I'm gonna do is score this at one and a half inches, which will bring my 11 inch piece of paper to 10 and a half inches. So I'm gonna score it at 11 and here is where my tip is. This isn't super thick cardstock, so it's not, um, it's not likely to jump lines, but sometimes when I'm using thick cardstock, it'll jump lines. And so all I do then is, I'll line this up, let's say I'm gonna do it at three inches, and I will make sure that my ruler is flush against the top, 
and that it's next to where I want to score. And if I hold this down in place, it holds my card in place so my card doesn't wiggle, like sometimes it will, especially with your thinner paper, and it'll make sure that I don't skip lines. So just use your straight edge, and it'll give you, it'll make your scoreboard more effective for you. All right, so I've scored this at a half an inch, and I am going to fold this. Well, let's see, when you score it, you fold it back, right? You do the opposite of what it, what you score and you fold back. So I haven't even used my bone folder yet, but I just folded this back. Now, I fold it before I make the next crease. This is now 10 and a half inches. And if you do the math, three and a half, three and a half, three and a half, because this is a trifold, gives you a perfect 10 and a half inches. Except it doesn't really work that way because of the way the folds are and the way the card works. And let me grab it. If I do that, what happens is I get this little fold, which is this piece here, it kind of overlaps the center and it makes it really bulky. So I alter it just a tiny bit and I made myself a little note. So my first score, I scored it one half inch. I folded it in, I'll bone folder it later. Now I am going to score it at three and three eighths, not quite one tick mark away from three and a half. And you'll see why in a minute. So I'm going to mark, do it at three and three eighths. And here, I'll show you how I do this little, little because I can't see so good because it's so far away. Um, I will put it here and I will make sure that it doesn't jump. And then I'll score it, all right? Then I've scored it, I'll pick it up. And you're supposed to score folding back, but I don't care. I'm going to fold it down. I've got my first fold that I made, my first score and fold, my second score and fold. And I did this one at three and three eighths. And I'll use the bone folder later. And now this last one, I'm gonna fold the first, fold the second. It should be just about perfect to score it at three and a half. You'll notice that your first, your half inch scored piece is just to the left of the three and a half inch mark. Am I even remotely in frame? Um, okay, well now we've moved the camera. There we go, because it's kind of useless if you can't see that. All right putting this back down. You'll notice it's just to the left of the three and a half inch mark, and that's what you want because you want a little bit of a clearance there so that you don't get too much bulk for it to fold and lay flat. So I'm gonna use my ruler again. I am going to score it at three and a half inches. And that's all the scoring we're gonna do. And now you can, uh, let's see if I can bring it up. You can see there's just a smidge. It's not even a full eighth of an inch between where I have folded this section over and this crease here. And I'll show you now why we do that. Okay, bone folder. And this one has gotta be 25 years old or so. It's stained and worn, but it still works great. All right, so I've creased that down. And I'm going to press this down. This is a heavier duty craft cardstock. And again, you can use thinner cardstock, thicker cardstock. It doesn't really matter. But when you've got thicker cardstock, you definitely want to use your bone folder. And this is end up going to end up being the front of my card. Did I measure this wrong? Maybe I didn't do it to 11. Well, live and learn, right? Look at that. It doesn't match up. But that's okay. We're going to fix it. I don't know what I did. Oh, you know what? I bet I cut this one to 10 and a half. I had cut one piece to 10 and a half, and then I realized I didn't need to cut it to 10 and a half, and I bet you that's what I did. So that's okay, we can, we can absolutely fix this. We will just go with plan B. You can still, it'll still work the exact same way, and you know what, in fact, I might even put just a piece of lace here. I, on this one, one of the samples that I made, I had the perforation lines or the, where the spiral binding goes in, and I left it a little bit longer. But this one, well, I'll just put a piece of lace there and call it good. Sorry about that. If you were doing this with a true eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, then this edge would have touched flush against here. I might have had a smidge of an overlap, but if it did have a smidge of an overlap, you can just trim it down. And again, the idea is that you're not creating bulk in here at the inner corner. All right, so there's your three folds. And now you're going to... I'm going to measure it because I don't eyeball so as good as I should. So it's just right here and there is half-ish. Okay, 
And now I'm going to take my divot out. I realized the other day I was using divot and gusset interchangeably like they're the same word. They're not. I apologize. A gusset is something that gives you a little extra room. A divot is like this. It's a little notch that you've taken out. So I apologize for that. See what happens when I make videos after a, a day of school. All right, there we go. I've inked up that edge. And there is my card. You still can't see the divot here. And like I said, I'm gonna probably end up, I won't do it on camera, of course, but I'm gonna probably end up bordering this with a piece of lace. And even if I don't, if it just stays like this, that's okay. It doesn't have to uh, match up evenly because of the type of a card that it is. All right, and then you can see on this one, I just glued down this inner piece and to make a, a tag spot or journaling tag spot for the back and added a decorative bit on the front. And this one is a solid piece. Here it had the divots, the little indentations from the braille because this is the back side of the braille. The braille's raised here. That's why I put a piece of lined paper. But this one, it's a solid piece of paper. You could just leave it to write or you could you know, make lines on it if you have a line stamp or you can draw lines. And I am going to take my little notches out of the corners. And I do that on pretty much all of them so that it doesn't um, catch. And I am going to glue the bottom and this piece down. Now my stamping blocks are um, kind of a mess simply because I use them as glue holders. I use them like this a lot. So I have a lot of glue on the backs of my stamping blocks. So ignore that. If glue on blocks bothers you, ignore it. All right. Now what I could do, and what I wanted to show you what I had done with the other pages, is this one is a darkroom door rubber stamp, but it's along the same lines of Carrie's from Witchcraft Do You Do? And it just makes really cool background texture. And I had somebody ask that I show that, so I'll do it really quickly. Uh, a lot of times I'll use archival ink, but you don't have to. You can use distress ink, use what you've got. This one's got an ugly spot on it right there, and I don't know why, but, well, oh, it's lint. Life in the laundry room. Okay, so I'm gonna ink this up. And the beauty of this is you don't have to have perfect impressions. If I want something perfectly um, evenly lined, I'll use my Misty, but, for this, I, I don't want them perfect. I want them kind of abstract. I stamp it off first, and then I use second and third and fourth generation stamping to, maybe I should make it right side up. Maybe that would be a good idea so my numbers aren't upside down. That would be kind of sad. All right, and I will put my stamping pad here, and then I'm just going to randomly stamp. Okay, this does not have a lot of ink on it. Let's let's try that again. It doesn't work so great as a sample if it's not doing what it's supposed to do. This is a fairly new stamp, so maybe I just haven't worn it in enough. All right, stamp it off, and there we go. That's better. And you can see, I'm not perfect, not careful. I just randomly stamp some images, and I'll bring it up there. So it gives you just a little bit of a background. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Stamp it off so that it's not a super dark impression. And little bits and pieces here and there. There we go. And it just, like I said, just gives it a little bit of texture. I can do the same thing on the back, but the back is going to be a pocket. And excuse me, just one moment. Sorry, I had to turn off my space heater. It's just like an oven in here. All right. Uh, stamping the back. I'm not going to do the back and the front. I am not going to do the front because I'm going to put an image on the front. So it's just a little bit of texture inside. So there you go. Now I just had a scrap piece of this digital paper. It's a Tracy Fox wallpaper, maybe, I think. Um, and I'm going to use the scoreboard again. I'm going to score at half an inch. This divot I took out earlier simply to save time and so you wouldn't have to watch me ink. But I'm going to do the side opposite the divot, and I'm gonna score it at a half an inch. And I do it, one, to add interest, and in, whoops, two, just to add a little bit of, um, uh, 
carry through, I guess. It, it makes the motion of, or the movement, I guess not motion, the movement of the paper, it kind of carries it around. So you don't have so much of a front back look. It just kind of, I don't know, just maybe I'm crazy, but it just kind of adds an additional bit of interest. And you know what? I think that's a little bit longer than I would like. But you know what? Uh, yeah, it is. It is a little longer than I would like. So I'm going to take a smidge off of each side. I didn't measure this beforehand. I just used a scrap that I had on hand. And I'm going to try to take about the same amount off on each side simply because I had mostly centered this divot and I didn't want to make it too far off. And then I'll just give it a little... Okay, here we go. For those who haven't seen the previous video, one of the things, or where did I put it? Oh, here we go. One of the things that I do when I'm working with thinner paper like this to get the edges to ink, I'll put a piece of heavy like chipboard or plastic or cardboard or cardstock or something behind it. And it holds that paper in place so that I can much more easily ink the edge. I get a better coverage and I don't have to worry about my paper bending so much. All right. Okay, and there we go. All right, inked up and ready to roll. Oh, here we go. I'm going to do this side too. Okay, now this is going to be the front of my card. Remember on the sample that I did here, this is the front edge of the card. And on the other sample, I should have grabbed that and pulled it out. The other sample, I did it the opposite. I put the pocket on the front and the overlap on the back. So you can see it works just as well either way. I put this here. There you go, that's better. I wanted a little bit of a, uh, there you go, like this. And then I'm going to put the glue right all along that one back. Now you could make it a tuck, but it's simple. And the idea was to create less bulk, not more bulk, because Lord knows I like to put too much bulk on my, my pieces. All right, this is the front, this is the top, this is the front. And even though art glitter glue dries fairly quickly, you still have a little bit of wiggle room. Like here, I didn't, I didn't center it perfectly. And not that it needs to be perfect, but I want it a little bit closer. So I'll just move it down. And push it in place. Same thing in the back. Move it down, push it in place. And that is today's pocket. Uh, I didn't pull Breck out. You've got a top, a place to write here. And as you can see from these, I embellished both of the insides, though you certainly don't have to. I did two different kinds of embellishments there. And then you've got a pocket in the back. And I tried on this one to show you a variety of different w ways that you can include writing space without just having lines. I mean, here's lined paper, which works, which not on this one. Oh, I know it was on the one that I made yesterday. Same idea. It's a little bit different, but same idea. So here is today's project done. Writing, writing, writing space and then a decorative element on the front or the back, depending on how you want to use it. Like I said, this one is the back in my book. Okay, now I am going to show, so that's the pocket done, the fold done. I had some questions and I wanted to answer those questions and I will show you a sample because I've had people ask me for samples. So this is yesterday's, here I'll pull it up and pull it over. This is yesterday's finished project and I just added a little bit of washi and um, thin line washi here to the end to cover where the, the file folder piece was. And I didn't add any bits to the inside simply because it's already thick enough. And you can see here. So that's yesterday's piece. And then what I did is with one of the samples that I had made, um, here we go, let's put this back here where it belongs. I used that same stamp that I just showed to do the backgrounds on this page. That's the next day's project. But you can see here, maybe you can see here, maybe I'll zoom in a little bit. You can see there how it just adds a nice subtlety to the background. So that's what I have done there. Here is, yeah, here is a completed one from yesterday. Oh, here we go. Oh, did it dry? Yeah, it's dry good. All right, to show you some of the different pieces 
that you can include in something like this for writing. They don't have to all be identically the same. So here I've got um, a journaling card and I, it was, I was letting it dry. So I didn't put the piece, but I'll put a piece of writing paper on the back, coffee dyed writing paper on the back. So there's a journaling card and you can certainly journal on the very front right here, but you can also journal on the back. And it, I did simple embellishments with these. I used more of that my Porch Pins, Prints B kit that I had because I liked the way it went with this paper so well. And then on this one, I just did a little writing booklet. I had more of this cardstock. I used a sheet of eight and a half by 11 cardstock and just some ledger paper to make a little writing booklet. And so in that tuck spot, yeah, I'm pretty good, is a writing booklet. And then here is a simple tag. And the tag has uh, more of that ledger paper on the back. So you've got three different types of places to write within this one little card style envelope. And then the very back here, I just cut, tucked a couple of the cut aparts on the Mike Porch Prince B thing in case they were wanting to use it for page decoration or I don't know, something else. So if this were going to go in a journal, um, you know, it would give the journaler options. And if it were a little gift card, which would make a great little gift card, they've got a variety of pieces to uh, be able to add to the project. So that is a sample of yesterday's completed and decorated as requested. All right, I've got my little notes here. Eyelet setter. Um, somebody asked me about my eyelet setter, and I'm going to pull this up. I don't know how well you can see that. I don't use this eyelet setter very often, not unless I need to go really deep. I, in fact, I almost never use this one. What I use instead is old school. And this goes back to scrapbooking days and making memory for a long time ago. This was from Ready Set Tools. I doubt they're still in business, but what you did was you've got these little metal pieces and then I'm able to set the super tiny, tiny little eyelets. Can you see that? Super, super little tiny eyelets. It's got little pieces that allow you to set larger ones, like this is the bigger ones, and then the really large ones. That's not it. Got a couple different sets and really large ones. So you can set a variety of different sizes. Gives you more options than the crocodile was. And it also splits it like a flower. And I won't do it because it's super loud, but it splits it like a flower. So you've got a smoother backside. It doesn't have that ugly smooshed backside. And then I just use super old school because like this is another type. And this is a concave piece. And I just, once it's been split, I put this on top and I hammer it. And like I said, I kept these from a long time ago in, in scrapbooking. This has got to be 20, 25 years old or so. And they work great, and I imagine they're available somewhere. But that's what I use. Somebody asked why my eyelets were split that way, and that's because I use this. So, eyelet question. I showed you the scoreboard chip. Oh, Jamie had a fabulous idea for this back pocket. So yesterday, remember I told you I only did the gusset on one side? Well, Jamie had the brilliant Jamie from something. I'm sorry. Um, she said, before you lay this top piece on, make this a half an inch longer, just like you did the back piece. So a half an inch longer, score it at a half inch, and then you've got a gusset on each side. You've got the gusset from the pocket, from the pocket base on one side, and then the gusset from the background paper on the other side. So if you needed another gusset, you could just add it to the paper before you glue the pocket on top. So I thought that was brilliant. Thank you, Jamie, for sharing that. Uh, okay, next next question or thing I was going to share is from one of the samples that I made today. And I've got samples everywhere. Oh, here we go. Okay, so my friend Laura Thomas, did this, is, this quote is on really thin, like sewing paper or tissue paper. It's super, super thin. Now, my guess is that she either stamped it directly on here or she ironed the tissue paper to parchment paper. Parchment paper? Freezer paper. Freezer paper. She ironed the tissue to freezer paper so that it gave it some stability, and then she ran it through your printer. Because that you can do that with um, fabric, and you can do that with thinner paper, and that would be my guess. And on that note... Um, if you don't belong to a swap group, I highly encourage you to consider doing it. The members, the three ladies in my swap group are, I mean, I consider them great friends. And I have learned so much from them 
and I've pushed myself and stretched myself as a crafter simply because I want to make things that uh, make them happy. So if you don't belong to a swath group, I really encourage you to consider it, give it a shot, because it's a great way to make friends and it's a great way to learn and grow as a crafter. So swap group. Oh, now this one. This one is, I purchased, Gail mentioned today on her video that she had per, she had um, made a new digital kit and she called it Neutral Basics. Well, that's right on my alley. So I purchased it and then tomorrow's fold, or tomorrow's pocket, or the next day's pocket, whenever I can do it, is a twist on something Carol Laws created and I'm going to be using Gail's new paper. So if you want to craft along with me or want to make something similar to what I'm going to do, I am going to use Gail's new paper. So there's that. You might want to go purchase that. And then the last question I got was, why do I take the time to do this? Why do I share my ideas if I don't plan to sell things and such? Well, one, because I enjoy it. I enjoy teaching. And two, I've been heavily influenced by people such as Gail and Tracy Fox, but also Jibid Neary and Heidi McGregor. And the thing they're very different styles and very different approaches, but the thing I noticed most and the thing I got the most from it is their attention to detail. That's what sets them apart. The fact that they took a little extra time or, or made sure that each element was um, the way they wanted it to look before they moved on. For a great example, I am going to try to bring this in so you can see it. This, um, this little ephemera piece, I used some Wink of Stella on the bee's body and it's got a little bit of a shimmer to it I don't know how well you can see that but it's got a little bit of a shimmer same thing with this little guy down here it makes this little bee body stand out a little bit more and I used Nuvo crystal glaze on the wings to make them more transparent or translucent and then on another one that I did oh here we go like I said on this one I stamped an itty bitty tag that I was gifted and I used the Vin Seth After Vintage Bees wax on here. Because this was a really bright Tim Holtz piece, I sanded it with my emery board. I inked it up a little bit because I like ink and grunge. And then I put and used an embossing pen to put a little bit of that. And it's those kinds of things that um, I find, that little attention to detail, that makes a project really fun and enjoyable. So there you go. There's my ideas. And thank you for watching. I hope this encouraged you and gave you some new ideas. And happy creating.